Happy New Year and welcome back to my YouTube channel in 2024. Starting the year off with a POV video on the BMW M4. Also, I've changed my room so it's a bit more of a studio, content creation sort of area that keeps me more motivated. I'm gonna throw a couple of bits on the screen to show what it looked like before and after, just so you get an idea of what I went from and what I've changed it to. Uh, probably spent like a couple hundred quid on decorating furniture exact and stuff like that, stuff I've had before. Made it into a little workspace where I'm a bit more motivated to make uh, YouTube video content, YouTube videos, content, um, and just work in general. So hopefully I'm gonna be able to push more YouTube videos out and be a bit more consistent as I've got a lot of good stuff planned for this year. And hopefully the production quality of my content is gonna be a lot better as well. I'm gonna try and put a bit more into these videos just to make them a little bit nicer to watch. Normally we jump into Lightroom at the end of the video, but in this one, we're just gonna throw the edits on the screen before and afters um, and then finish with an auto outro. But yeah, enjoy the video. Yeah, today we are shooting on brand new, well brand new to me anyway, 16 to 35, 2.8 G Master, the Mark II. So over 100 grams lighter than the Mark I. The camera is Sony A7 IV with a camera cage, mount for my gimbal, which is down there, and then for my tripod. Because I use this for work, I pretty much never take them off. That's what we're shooting with today. It's just so nice to use. Fucking hell. Right, so I'm going to show you a shot at 16mm. You know, you'd never really take pictures at 16mm of a car. Right, <laughs> that's 16mm. And then 35mm. So there's a the difference. Take a few interior shots. So here's what I normally use for work, 24 to 70, 2.8. Workhorse. I think the 16 to 35 might 
be my new favourite. Anyone that's doing photography or videos, I highly recommend you get a 2470. You can pretty much shoot every possible job with this, apart from like race track stuff. <laughs> then you might need a 70 to 200. Okay, second location. So this is a perfect example of how you don't need an amazing spot to make a car look good. So as you can see behind us, it's a car park to a co-op. But this way looks pretty decent and it's fairly close to work, so we just came here. Actually, looks good at 28 now. Oh, I like that all the leaves are on the floor as well. I just realise that autumn's coming to an end. So with head-on shots, it's always best to always have the wheel straight so nothing pokes out the side, which is fairly obvious to be fair. Landscape. I'm gonna get some cinematics as well. So this is why I love it. RS3 Pro. Slot it in, turn it on. There we go. Bosh, you're ready to go. I'm gonna throw the camera settings on the screen for video. I've normally got a monitor here and I film off the uh, Ninja 5, but today we don't have that option. So I get a couple of cinematic shots and then I'll throw the settings on the screen. And then just to pause this, what I love about this, you just tap once, it'll just lock it in place. <clears throat> also, you'll see it on the screen, but when I'm shooting in S-Log 3, it's always overexposed by at least plus one or more. I find with S-Log 3, especially when you're shooting at native ISO, so on this uh, A74, I only ever shoot ISO 800 or 3200. I never go above or below. So Sony recommends the native ISOs for a reason when you're shooting S-Log 3. So I tend to just stick to what Sony recommends. I've obviously messed about with different ISOs, bumping it up and down, but <clears throat> for noise, it doesn't really matter too much in the daytime, but for me, I just stick to native ISOs. It just makes it easier. Right, back to a couple more photos and we're finished. Not far off now. Uh, so like I said, as you can see from little locations, it doesn't have to be the most amazing spot, as long as you've got the focus on the car and the background's not as crazy. Yeah, so back to me in the studio. <laughs> so if you notice the edits on the first location, they're a little bit different to my normal editing style. Two different locations, two different styles of photos in terms of the edited versions, just to show you like what's possible. Of course, you can click the link below or go onto lewismorrismedia.com to grab some uh, preset packs. I will be having look packs coming as well for S-Log3 footage. They'll also be able to work on other cameras and other picture profiles. So the G82M4 was so fun to drive. But yeah, I'm gonna try and integrate more driving footage into these videos. And I thought it'd be good to throw a bit more videography settings into these videos, so as well as it catering for pho photographers, videographers that watch my videos can see how I like to shoot and stuff. So if you made it this far, I really appreciate you watching the video. It does take a lot of hours to make the POV videos because you've got to put in so much information, the before and after photos, edit those photos, do the 
behind the scenes, get the clips, transfer them over, colour grade them, clip, oh, it's a long one. But yeah, it's worth it in the end when I actually sit down and watch the video when it's completed. So the less we hate, the more we create, and I'll see you in the next video. Safe. Also make sure you click that subscribe button down below. Safe.